what is a derivative? Well, this is a topic uh, which I would like to explain in this particular video. Uh, what is actually a derivative? We have heard a lot about derivative, differentiation. So I just thought to uh, make a video on the basic fundamental concept of what is a derivative. Hello and welcome. And I heartily welcome you to this new video on going to the roots and under understanding what is actually a derivative. So in this particular video, what we are going to do is that we are going to go forward with two basic concepts. The first one is called average velocity and the second one is called instantaneous velocity. And we will look forward that from average velocity, when we move towards instantaneous velocity, what are the things or what are the limitations that we have and from there how we can arrive at the conclusion of a derivative rather the concept of a derivative. So before we st start our video on defining what is a derivative, what I would like to show you is a basic definition of derivative. So here is a basic definition of derivative. Now we can, you can read it out. The derivative is the instantaneous rate of change of a function with respect to one of his variables. This is equivalent to finding the slope of the tangent line to the function at the point. And differentiation is the act of finding a derivative. Now, once we go forward with this definition, one thing is quite clear is that we know what is called the slope or the tangent of a line. We know how we can find the tangent of a line. But we don't know about this particular term, that is, what is an instantaneous rate of change of a function. So what we need to do is that we need to find out or we need to understand what actually is instantaneous velocity or instantaneous rate of change. So now you see that basically, you know, we have done uh, in our earlier video, what is differentiation. It is basically the act of finding this derivative, which is the basic <clears throat> uh, subject, which be, be, be the central idea of this video. Now, if I go forward from this particular uh, definition, first of all, what I would like to say you that say, for example, if I take a person, say, for example, if I draw a kind of a figure out here, say, this is a person, right? And this is, uh, he is standing at, say, for, for example, point A, right? And Right. And this person is moving. Right. And from here, this person moves and arrives at this point, which is point B. So this same person has moved from point A and is arrived at point B. Now, what we know is that can we calculate the average velocity? Definitely. So if I take, for example, calculating the average velocity, so average velocity if I take average velocity, I know is the distance from A to B. Say for example, I write distance uh, from point A to point B, right? Whole divided by time that is required to get from A to B, right? So this distance which is traveled from A to B divided by the time that is taken from A to B. And this time, this one, if I can take, I can again tell average velocity and I can denote it by the distance as the change in the distance denoted by delta S and the time which is denoted by delta T, right? So this is how we can find out the average velocity, which by far we know. We know the concept of finding out the average velocity. So this is what is called finding an average average velocity. Now what we are going to know, understand from this particular uh, part is that what is actually an instantaneous velocity. So we can go by this uh, definition for example. Now you see it is an instantaneous velocity of an object is the limit of the average velocity as time approaches zero. Right. Now you see two points. One is the what is the limit and what is as time approaches zero. So we are going to concentrate on these two parts. What is the limit and what is time which approaches zero? Now I have given another definition in a word, the velocity of an object under motion at a specific point of time. Okay, 
So now you see from the previous, uh, previous uh, figure, if you can see, what you get is that this person is moving from point A to point B and you will get a time. Say for example, the time here is something uh, t equals to uh, 1 and it reaches to t equals to 5. So the time is given from time from A to B. But note, what is instantaneous velocity's definition? It tells that it is an object of uh, limit of the average velocity as time approaches 0. That means we have to deal with something where the time approaches 0. So it is the velocity of an object under motion at a specific time. This is not a specific time. If you go to the previous one, this is not a specific time. This is through a duration, say t0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it is with a duration, the average velocity. But instantaneous tells that it is at a particular point of time. So let us give a, a nice illustration. Say for example, this one. Okay, this is a speedometer, okay, where the, the arrow is pointing at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 seconds, right? Now say for example, for example, immediately I want to find out what is the instantaneous velocity of this motorcycle or the bike, which is when t is 5. That means time is 5 seconds. What is the instantaneous velocity that is at a point of time t equals to 9, t equals to 8 or t equals to 1, anything. So that means if this is a clock or the, uh, or the speedometer which is moving in this direction, I suddenly stop and I would find out this time. It further moves, I suddenly stop, I want to find the time at this direction, at this point. So instantaneous velocity is that, that I am willing to find out uh, the velocity of the motion at a specific point of time. Now here is another description which my wife has helped because she is an artist show, so she can draw uh, wonderful diagrams. So this is drawn by her. You see, this is a car, right? This is right at this point, okay? This car is moving with this is a curve. Now, what is the average? This is the average, the dotted line. That means it is over a period of time. But for example, here, when the car stops at say t equals to seven, or this one, t equals to nine, or maybe this one where t equals to 14, so if I want to find out what is the instantaneous velocity of that car at a specific point, how will I do? Or rather I would say that what is the way in which we can find out the instantaneous uh, velocity at that particular time. So you, you see that this is quite clear that this car is moving and we want to find out just one specific point, this one or this one, similar to that of a speedometer when we are stopping the clock and we want to find out that what is the what is the speed at that particular time when t equals to something okay <clears throat> so uh, till now things are quite clear so we are uh, revolving on under the concept of average velocity and instant uh, instantaneous velocity so now you see i have given another uh, unit definition the distance covered unit unit of time is called average speed and the speed at it at any instant time is called an instantaneous speed, right? So from here, what I can show you is that average velocity. So from here, I can again write that average velocity is always denoted by the change in time and distance that is delta s whole divided by delta t, which is the change in time, right? Now, instantaneous velocity is something that we are going to deal with and we are going to see how things are. So this part is quite clear, I hope, what is average speed and instantaneous speed. So this is in a unit time and this is at any instant time. Instant time means that the time which we speak, uh, fix up immediately this or this or maybe the car moving at this speed and we fix up any arbitrary time. Okay. So this is what we called, uh, we are arriving to this part, which is called instantaneous uh, speed, right? Now, there are a few important points before we go ahead, I would like to uh, mention here. So these are a few of the important points. One is that instantaneous speed is a vector quantity, yeah, because it uh, denotes both magnitude and direction. The SI unit, standard unit is meters per second. Uh, uh, it can be determined by taking the slope of a distance of a time graph, which we will show. And if the speed has uniform velocity, then instantaneous velocity may be the same as the standard velocity. That means, say for example, uh, if I take that, uh, if I take a graph, say for example this one, 
and if i if i if i take a velocity which is moving in this direction say for example uh, this is y and this is x and this is moving in this direction then at each of the points that we plot on this graph time distance graph this is it, it doesn't give you an instantaneous speed because all of these are uniform all of these are uniform right but whereas if i draw a kind of a graph where it shows a kind of a graph like this so i can f f pick up any point like here I can pick up any point like here or I can pick up any point like here and I can find out the instantaneous speed. So that means that in here the steepness is much higher compared to this where the steepness is lower. Again here the steepness is higher. So that means we are drawing tangent lines in order to find out the steepness and other things. Okay. So now let us see. So you, it is quite clear that with an uniform velocity, instantaneous speed doesn't come into play. It only comes into play when there is a uh, when there is a graph or there is a curve. Okay, this is a kind of a nice example which I have given. If an object moves with a constant velocity of fifty km per hour for two hours, what is the instantaneous velocity after thirty minutes? See here, it is important constant velocity. This is moving, let me use a red pen, this is moving at a constant velocity. So as we have noted that when it is a constant velocity, the answer is that as the object is under uniform velocity, its instantaneous velocity is the same as the standard velocity. That means instantaneous velocity is only going to come into play when there is a non-uniform motion. So here is a graph, you can see this, this carries on in a uniform velocity from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever be the number. So this is uniform velocity. It is a standard velocity. Even here, if you see this graph has broken down here and then it comes low, it goes a little bit high and then flat and further comes low and goes on. But still this is uniform velocity. This is a standard velocity. That means there is no change. We, you, you know, although it breaks, but it is at a uniform speed, some amount which moves up and down. But in here you see this is the non-uniform or the where we can calculate the instantaneous velocity because all of these are moving the steepness here is high again this one so it should be a curve things will become more clearer once we uh, start plotting those things. So just understand that under a non-uniform uh, movement or under non-uniform velocity instantaneous velocity comes into play not into these. These are called rectilinear motion or uniform velocity. So it won't come into play. Right. So now what we do is that. So from here what we can do again. Uh, what, uh, as you see from uh, this part. Uh, from, the, from this graph. So what we can do is that. If this point is taken at here. And this point is taken at some point arbitrarily here. Or maybe let us say this one and this one. Okay. And this is taken at the y-axis, this is at the x-axis. Well, what we can tell from here is that the average rate of change, again, it is similar. The delta y by delta x, that is a change in y divided by the change in x. Now let us, for example, uh, I hope you all know what is a secant of a line. So I'm not going further. Secant line is where uh, it cuts the two. Uh, the, the secant line that intersects the curve at a minimum of two points is called a second line. So we need this. So I will just uh, come up with the next part. Now, say for example, this is a graph. I think this is quite visible, right? And and now so, say for example, uh, let, me, let me now point these things for you. So this is a point, right? This is a point which we called it as x1 and this is some arbitrary point which is called x2 and this is this graph is out of function uh, f of x. So what I can do is that when I'm mentioning I can mention this point as x1 comma f of x which is this particular point x1 and this particular point I can mention it as x2 comma f of x2 right. So this is x1, this is x2. These are the, the, the two points. Now to find the y value, we will take this x value and put it into the function. So we will take the x value and then we will put it in the function. Say for example, we are finding the average rate of velocity, average velocity, average rate of change. So what it comes from here, if I draw uh, the formula that is delta y by delta x, 
which becomes equal to so what I what I will do uh, we already know let me write it that slope equals to uh, rise over run this is a pretty old formula from from here what we get is that we can get uh, the uh, y values as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 this is the kind of a standard formula so this is already known from our school days so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to plug in those values again I will tell you to find the y value we will take this x value this x value and plug in into both the functions so what we do here is that we write f of x2 okay minus the value this one f of x2 and then f of x1 okay whole divided by this is the y2 minus y1 part then I write it as x2 minus x1 right so more rigorously if y1 equals to so I can uh, I can tell that if y1 y1 equals to f of x1 okay and say for example and y2 equals to f of x2 okay then the average rate of change with y with respect to x in the interval from x1 to x2 is the average rate of change of y for unit increase in x. So this is, uh, I think it is quite clear that this is actually what we are doing is that we are trying to find out the average. Okay, so this is basically the average. We know from this earlier formula. So this I can call this one. This one is called the average rate of change this is the average so we are plugging in the values f x2 y1 y2 minus y1 what is y1 this one fx1 right and the minus x2 minus x1 these are the values so the, this this we have put it okay now you will see uh, say for example if i show you this particular graph okay so you see uh where delta y has changed delta x has changed considerably the change in y with respect to change in x so from here obviously what i can say is that therefore i can say delta y by delta x equals to y2 minus y1 this is y2 minus y1 which is this change whole divided by x2 minus x1 x2 minus x1 this change okay so here as x has increased from x to delta x y has increased from y to delta y so on average unit this has increased by delta y by delta x now say for example from here if i take a kind of a very 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 basic kind of an idea say for example here is a car i'm not good like my wife so you have to pardon me this is some kind of a clumsy drawing so this car is say for example this is moving okay and at t equals to zero say for example it has moved to two meters right and then it if t equals to six for example it has moved at a distance of x equal to 14 meters so from here definitely what we can do is that we can calculate the rate of change that is delta x by delta t okay so what would it be 14 minus 2 divided by 6 minus 0 it will be 2 meters per second this is just to show you uh, uh, how do we calculate this uh, average rate from this uh, you know the change in the uh, x increased by delta x y is increased by delta y so what is the average right now what we will do is that we are coming to the part of instantaneous rate okay now this will take another page for us in order to understand and from here we will be closely going to the fact of the derivative okay so instantaneous rate uh, okay let us uh, first of all start one by one there are uh, several graphs below but we will start one by one so when we denote the change of a function now say for example let us denote this is a graph okay so we get a point this one okay and uh, when we denote the change say for example this has changed so we need definitely another point right and what we do is that we draw a kind of a tangent right from here to here right so we have just uh, you know two points and from here what we do is that we deduce the formula 
of y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Right. Now say for example, say for example, we have just one point. That is what I told you. If you remember, what is the definition of instantaneous rate of change? I will just, uh, here it is. If you just remember, the speed at any instant time is called an instantaneous speed or uh, just at one specific point of time. Now say for example, this part is known when we get these two points. What if we don't know these two points? Say for example, right? So what happens is that if this particular case happens, then say for example, uh, say for example, if we take this graph, okay, and we take some kind of a, uh, say for example, uh, okay, this would come towards this. Anyway, say for example, if this is the axis, then say for example, we take a value, this, this particular point, or this, this goes maybe like this. So if we take this particular point and we take this value, say for example, as minus three and five, this particular, and we just know that this part. So if we plug in this formula, y2 minus y1 whole divided by x2 minus x1 okay so what we get from here would be say 5 minus 5 that is these two points minus say for example minus 3 minus of minus 3 so what it would become it would become 0 by 0 now this is weird right this generally doesn't happen so what do we do if we just get a single point okay Say for example, this particular graph. Say for example, we have got a single point out here. Okay. So we know only the single point and we need to calculate the instantaneous rate of change. So what we need to do is that if we know one point, obviously we can use this formula, but we need two variables for that. Okay. So what we do is that we take another point arbitrarily, say for example. And what we do is that we start getting this point closer to this, to this. So all these points are trying, we are just drawing these points, all these points, and we are getting the slopes like this and this and this like this, right? So what we are trying to do is that we are trying to make this point move towards this central point, make it in red, say for example, this particular part. And when it is infinite, seemingly small, what we call is that the point uh, settle in some kind of a limiting value. We call it as limiting value. Okay, so the point comes closer and closer and closer and closer until it gets here. As a typical type of a demonstration, for example, this part, you see this graph, okay. This is taken as 6 and 5 and this is taken as 4 and 3, right? Now, if I use the same formula, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So what I get from here would be 5 minus 3 divided by 6 minus 4 and it would be uh, 2 by 2, it will be 1. Okay, right. So now what we are doing is that, for example, let me use another color. So this, we are trying to move this point closer to this, okay, because we know this point only and we don't know this point. We are arbitrarily taking another point so that we can use the average velocity formula close to that. So this one, this one, if it is moving further here and then here and then here and then here and then here. So each point, say for example, here the value is 1.5, okay, here the value gets to 1.7. Here the value gets to 1.8, here the value gets to 1.9 and further closer maybe here we get a value which is 1.999 but still it is an approximation. So it is getting close to, uh, it is getting close to 2. So 2 would be our limiting value. 2 would be the limiting value. So we don't know, it can be 1.99, it can be 2.15, it can be anything. So the approximation for the distance, uh, instantaneous rate of change is 2. Now an idea of how the function is changing at a single point, that is the basically the approximation. So what we do is that we call this limiting value, so we write it in mathematical terms like this. Say for example, we write 
limit of the function of x where x is moving towards a or it can be any value. So this is what we use in mathematical term in order to denote the value. Okay, so I think this is, uh, uh, the, you, you got this point which is becoming a little bit more clear. So what, what we are doing is that from the average rate of change which requires two values to determine through which we can get a slope of the line or the tangent of the line which we did in this previous example. If you see this one will be clearer. So here what we have done is that we have taken two points and we have used the same y2 y1 formula in order to get to the average rate of change. But what if we get just a single point and we have no other clue on this earth so that we can get the value. So what we do is that we take an arbitrary point and we try to move this point as close as we can and we call this as a limiting value. Now say for example, here is the same graph. Okay, here is the same graph. Now what we are going to do, we are going to use the same formula, but just hold on with me. So what I have done, if you see that this x1 has moved at a distance of x plus h. So what I can do, I can use this particular path or the path which is x has traveled as h. Now we have got the same x1 and x2 values. But what I'm going to do over here is that I'm going to use this one. This one, if I put it as x1, I'm going to use as x1 comma f of x1. Right, this would be the first. And let me use a different color so that things become clear. So uh, we are defining x and y in terms of the first point x1 and a distance from the first point, right? So here, when this has moved, I won't, this, this uh, part, part x2, what I will do is that I will write it as x1 plus h, right? Because it has moved this part and the function of x1 plus h. Because this is f of x and what is f of x? This part x1 plus h which has moved. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same formula uh, which is which we have used. If you have forgot, just keep a note on this, this part, which is right now on your screen. So you remember this formula. So we are going to take hold of this. Okay. And yeah. So what we are going to do is that, uh, yeah. So y2 minus y1. So we have a one point and then how we can find out the other point. So what we have done is that we have selected this point and we have substituted the values. So now what we are going to do is that we are going to calculate the slope. Okay. So let us see from here. We are going to calculate the slope, right? So slope would be what? y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So what is y2 minus y1? So what we do here is that we put in the values f of x1 plus h minus f of x1. Right? This one. Right? Uh, x, uh, f of x1 plus h. This one. Minus f of x1. Right? And whole divided by x1 plus h minus x1 right so that part become quite clear so this one is y2 minus y1 that is f of x uh, x1 plus h minus f of x1 that is this is y2 this is y1 which we have put whole divided by x2 minus x1 x2 minus x1 x2 is x1 plus h and minus x1 x2 minus x1 so things become clear now if you solve it out, you will see that these two h gets cancelled out, right? And then we write this slope, I should not use equal, it will be uh, somehow, uh, equ uh, it is equi equivalent, it is not equal because we don't know. Why we don't know, again I will like to tell you because these are all approximation as you have seen here. Concept is clear. So it can be any of these values, right? 1.5, 1.9, we don't know what is the value. So I am writing that slope is more or less equal to this one. So once this h, uh, x gets cancelled, what is the final value? So slope becomes equal to f x1 plus h, x1 plus h, right? Uh, minus f of x1, which is right on the numerator, whole divided by h. 
okay so as we move close this h as we move it closer so we are moving it further closer and closer to this in finite seemingly small it becomes then what we do is that you see now comes the beauty of calculus we take this slope as the limit as the limit okay where h is approaching 0 this is how we write h is approaching approaching 0 and the numerator remains as f of x plus h minus f of x1 whole divided by h right so you got it we take the limit of h because we are trying to move this h as close as we can to this value right so as we move close to the h, it becomes infinite, seemingly small, and we show that h is equal h is approaching zero. So it becomes infinitely close, and uh, the approximation now becomes exact. So now you see that once we are using this particular line, this particular line, we won't use it like that. We won't use it like that. So what we are going to do? This is the finest tower. When you really understand calculus so you see what we do is that we can write limit okay of h approaching 0 right numerator f of x plus h minus f of x this should be x1 right anyway uh, just let me see this so the limit h approaches 0 f x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h right just note one thing which i would like to tell you from the uh, from the previous uh, derivation just a second from the previous derivation if we are including like x1 here we had included x1 x1 but currently what i am doing is that i'm just omitting these values of x x1 i'm just uh, concentrating on the fundamental concept that the, uh, the when h is approaching towards 0 f of x h plus x this one is basically what this is the slope of a tangent so he, th this one I can write as slope of a tangent line right and this is actually the concept which we arrived and this this is called what is a derivative this is what we call is a derivative we will soon see that what actually is the notation of derivative